When I was home this year, over Thanksgiving break, my mom and I were going through closets and boxes and things, and we came across this bag of old scraps of fabric in the bottom of a closet. And I pulled it out and I said, Mom, what is this? And she got this really funny look on her face. It turns out, she said, um, that was going to be your baby quilt. When I was born, my mom didn't just want to be a stay-at-home caretaker. She wanted to show that she could do more than keep a tiny screaming human alive. And so she decided the way to do that would be to make a quilt. So she went to the fabric store and she bought a how-to book on how to make quilts. <laughs> and she picked out her fabrics and she picked out a pattern. And every day when she would put me down for a nap, she would then go and work on her quilt. I don't know how many of you have done quilts before, but there are a lot of steps. You get the fabric, you wash the fabric, you iron the fabric, you cut the fabric, you pin it, you sew it, you hopefully don't have to backwards sew and then sew again. There's just a lot of, of steps. And so things were going really well. And she got her fabric, she picked the pattern, she was working on the quilt, everything was going along swimmingly. She made all of her squares. And then it came time to put the squares together and they didn't fit. And at that point, my mom was so tired and so befuddled in that exhaustion, she could not figure out how to make it work. So she took all the squares and threw them in a bag and threw them in the bottom of their closet where they have lived for the last 33 years. <laughs> when I came home to Boston, I absconded with the bag with the intention of surprising my mom with this quilt that it would be a sweet surprise for her that I finished the quilt she started for me, and that it would be a gift for our baby now, a gift of love through the generations. But I didn't expect that the process of making my mom's quilt would have so much to teach me about honoring legacy and the way that values are transmitted through the generations. When I got home, the first thing I did was got out the book from the bag, and my mom had very helpfully written out a sheet of instructions, but they make no sense. <laughs> there are numbers and figures, there are charts, and at the bottom of the, of the sheet, there's just a space where it says quilts, 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 quilts. <laughs> So this was the first lesson of the quilt, which is that we all want to go above and beyond for the people that we love. And sometimes it's tempting to give of ourselves when we have no gas in the tank. So the first lesson of the quilt is one of sustainability. It's what they tell you when you get on the airplane. You have to put your oxygen mask on before you help others. It's really important when we make gifts of love for others that we make sure that we're taking care of our own physical being, making sure that we're okay. That means you can finish the quilt. The next lesson came from the squares. So um, my mom picked out this fence rail quilt pattern that requires you to make lots of little narrow rectangles that all fit together into perfect squares. But somehow her rectangles are more like trapezoids. <laughs> They're all a little crooked. So when I took the squares out, they were all different sizes. Some were seven by five, some were six and a half by 6.2, so all over the place. And at that moment, I had a choice. I could have taken apart every seam and cut down every rectangle and made sure that they were exactly perfect and fit together perfectly. But that didn't feel quite right to me, in part because I wanted my mom's seams to be in this quilt, and also because the point of, of quilting is not necessarily perfection. It's the beauty of the imperfections that come together. So the second lesson of the quilt is being grateful for what is. I took each square, and I just cut the outsides down to the same size and fit them all together. When we think about what we want to pass down, 
when we think about what we want people to remember about us, often we, we want them to see us in the best possible light. We want them to see us for our successes, for our glories, for all the ways we were perfectly put together. But the second lesson of this quilt is it's really important to share our imperfections, our trapezoids, the places where our seams are a little crooked. Because we don't want to pass down a picture of life that was so perfect that it's unachievable. We want those who come after us to know that even when you have flaws, even when you have imperfections, even when you have vulnerabilities, you can create a beautiful tapestry of life. And then it was so interesting for me in this quilt making process. Because sitting at the sewing machine brought back memories I, I haven't considered in, in almost 20 years. My grandfather, or Sir Grandfather, as he used to call himself, passed away the second day of Passover, the year after my bat mitzvah. And my grandfather was a character. He uh, had a great sense of humor. He was a prankster. He was somebody who used to put like one grape in a bag in someone else's grocery start cart at the store. He loved getting a laugh and he loved neckties. When he passed away, he had a collection of about 500. And after he died, all the male relatives gathered together and they all took all the ties they could ever want and more. Any of the ties that were wearable, they took. And then there were about, I don't know, three or 350 left of these ties. And the ones that were left were loud and eccentric. A few of them were very ugly. There was even some joke ties, like my mom had gotten my grandfather this 10 foot long tie that he wore as a joke. And I didn't want those ties to go to waste. I knew if we gave them away, no one would ever wear them. I mean, they were ties from like, you know, the very, very skinny ties that were fashionable at one point and the very fat ties that were fashionable all over the place. Um, so I decided at the time to sew the ties together into a quilt. And uh, it was a fascinating process. Ties are really hard to work with. They're silk, so they stretch and they move, and it was a great learning experience. But what was interesting about the ties was that my grandfather, I know, never intended for me to get his ties. Those ties were for him an expression of a particular moment. They were a joke. They were something to get a conversation started. They were something that he wore to make himself happy, to make others happy around him. But if I'd asked him, like, Grandpa, what do you want me to get from your life? He would not have said, I want you to have these ugly ties, although he didn't think they were ugly. He would have said, I want you to maybe, you know, I want you to have a value of grammar. I want you to use correct grammar. I want you to speak up for yourself. I want you to have a sense of humor. But the ties, not so much. And that's really the third lesson, which is that we don't get to control what we pass down. Loved ones often receive things that we don't intend for them to receive, and even things that maybe we wouldn't have given them. At the same time, there are things that we really do want to pass down that are really important for us to give away that maybe our loved ones don't want to receive. And so the question is then, what do you do with these things? You might think that the way to honor our ancestors' legacy is to take everything they've left behind and to use it exactly the way that they used it, to do with it exactly what they did, to receive everything no matter how it fits with our lives or not. But I think the work of our lives is not just to do what has been done or take what has been used before, but to use those pieces and to create something new that fits within our own aesthetic, that fits within our world in which we can honor our parents, our grandparents, our ancestors that have come before. Things change generation to generation. For my mom, the quilt was a statement that she was more than a mother that she was able to do more than just be a stay-at-home mom, that she could create and be productive. For me, that same quilt 
is a statement of my mom's love, my love for my mom and the way that I've crafted my life in her image, and my hope that our child will feel all the love of generations surrounding them. For my grandfather, his ties were a joke. They were what he wore when he wanted to go out and start a conversation, make a statement at the bridge club. But for me, those ties were like a key to moments in his life that I didn't know him, to experience that he had that I would never know about, and a way for me to, to sew my grief into fabric and to honor him in that way. If you look up the word for Hebrew, uh, the word for quilt in Hebrew, you'll find it smichat laim, a blanket of patches. But that word smicha is the same word that we use for ordination. Smicha, spelled a different way, with a samach instead of a sin, is the transmission of authority through generations. And that makes deep sense to me, because in truth, the work of our lives is the work of making quilts. When we're born, our ancestors wrap us up in a quilt that has been carefully sewn through the generations, a quilt of values and love and tradition and memory. As we live, we pick up scraps, scraps of our parents, scraps of our friends, of experiences. We work to sew our own pieces onto that quilt. And when we die, we leave behind scraps we never could figure out quite how to piece together. We leave behind our quilt, but we also leave behind the pieces for loved ones to make their own quilts, quilts that are gonna warm and protect the next generation. So as we rise for Yisker today, I wanna invite everyone to picture the quilt that you were born into. What's the quilt that held you, that your parents received you with? What are the pieces of fabric and love that you have taken along the way that you've used to sew your own quilt? And what are the pieces that you intend to leave behind for the next generation to warm them and protect them and to guide them? Please write.